everybody, Ben Rogers here, the Raptors Dodgers, directing the Toronto Raptors 115-105 loss to the Milwaukee Bucks, and this game, it sucked, it sucked as a Raptors fan to watch, but I'm not going to lose too much sleep over it, I want to get that out of the way as we start the podcast, the Raptors are fine, and we won the championship last season, we knocked out the Milwaukee Bucks in the Eastern Conference Finals, we won when it mattered, we lost them a lot in the regular season last year, so no issues, no worries, we're not going to overreact to one loss, but the Toronto Raptors have lost their two games so far this season to upper tier competition, you know, they lost the Milwaukee Bucks, they lost the Boston Celtics, and there are some takeaways, some things that we have to look at if, you know, we want this team to be successful going forward, so we're going to break down to all that, and there's definitely some positive takeaways in this one, but the, the most glaring one that just shines right out to you when you want to break down this game it's the first quarter and the Milwaukee Bucks came into this game ready to go they wanted this win more than the Toronto Raptors especially at the beginning of this one and I don't usually blame like those cliche stuff where oh one team just wanted it more than the other one or the the motivation all that sort of stuff I think all teams are motivated when they want to play but the energy the intensity level the Milwaukee Bucks specifically Giannis Antetokounmpo in that first quarter outmatched the Toronto Raptors and once we matched it we were able to come back but the first quarter dug us a hole that we just weren't able to come out of. So that was something unfortunate to see, and it makes sense. The Milwaukee Bucks lost to us in the Eastern Conference Finals. We ended up winning the championship, and I'm sure the Bucks expected, especially with all the injuries the Warriors had, that they would have won the championship if they had to beat us. They were up 2-0. It looked like they had it in the bag, and we know the real the story of what actually happened. So there's definitely some frustration. There's a lot of these guys in the Bucks are coming back, and specifically Giannis. So they, they were motivated. They were more motivated, ready to go than the Toronto Raptors to start, and it it led to a 36 to 17 first quarter and that sucked that sucked to watch and the Raptors weren't hitting shots at all and they, they they were settling for for looks it was it was really unfortunate to see but nonetheless as the game went along the the certainly the greatest positive to take from this game is Kyle Lowry and this season he's been on a mission he's been ready to come out and and just dominate teams he had 36 points tonight six assists four rebounds a ridiculous third quarter five and nine from the three-point line 11 of 18 wouldn't mind him being more aggressive down the stretch of this one maybe take the game into his own hands the way that he was playing tough but I'm sure you know Kyle Lowry's always looking to get everyone else going but he looked phenomenal and this is what we'd like to see from Kyle Lowry because we've talked about the past couple seasons Kyle Lowry's kind of Turned, turned himself into more of a three-point shooter, more of a three-point specialist specifically, and doesn't do the other Kyle Lowry things on the offensive end in terms of scoring. He's always going to facilitate. He's always going to do the defensive stuff, but he stopped kind of getting in the lane, taking those drives that we have we saw, especially 2014, 2015, 2016, that made him one of the best point guards in the NBA. He stopped that more, more so focused on facilitating for other people, and when you have Kawhi Leonard, DeMar DeRozan, you know, in that 2017 year, when you have those guys on your team, it makes sense to do that, and with Pat Pascal Siak, I'm going to get into him a bit later, sometimes not asserting himself as the number one scoring option, even though he's done a solid job at it. I'm not uh, certainly not going to bash anything on Pascal Siakam's season so far, but so Kyle Lowry's still willing to take up the scoring load as Pascal Siakam transitions into the number one option for this team. And tonight, especially where Pascal struggled, had some foul trouble, that's an area where Siak- we'll talk about Siakam after, Lowry stepped it up, and that's really, really nice. Really great to see. I, I can't root for anyone harder than Kyle Lowry. And when he's rolling and seeing all of our slash NBA, all the NBA fans getting to witness what we see on a day-to-day basis and people kind of ignore because he's not like a box score stuffer like Kyrie Irving or doesn't have usually insane highlight plays like Kyrie, Steph Curry, he doesn't get the recognition. So shout out to Kyle Lowry for playing at an all-star level on a consistent basis and tonight just showing up against the Milwaukee Bucks. But the other guy we got to talk about was Pascal Siakam. And by no means did he have a poor game maybe a poor game in terms of Pascal Siakam standards, what we're expecting from him now, but dealt with foul trouble, only played 32 minutes, 16 points, 5 rebounds, 7 of 19 from the field, but the issue with this game, because this is a perfect game for Pascal Siakam if we have a guy like Kawhi Leonard on the roster, where, you know, we have the the A1, I guess Kyle Lowry took over the number one option tonight, but down the stretch, we're relying on Pascal Siakam to be that closer. At the when there's a run happening with the Milwaukee Bucks, because I, I think this Toronto Raptors team is talented enough. To, you know, I predict us to be the first seed. I think we can go far in the playoffs. I think we have the talent to do it, especially with guys like Fred Van Vliet, Pascal Siakam. But the, they need to be timely. They need to assert themselves when it matters and that's the true key to a number one option I th- I'm sure we're going to see that more as the season goes along and Siakam's been doing it against the lesser tier teams but when we play a team like the Milwaukee Bucks and Giannis comes out 
trailblazing and the the Bucks go on a run because good teams are very capable of just putting up 10 points in a row right on you and you need a star player to quiet that run you need a a player to stop the momentum of the t- other team before it gets out of hand because Kyle Lowry I think at this point he used to be able to do it on a consistent basis but he his scoring more so comes in waves you know when Kyle Lowry's hot he's hot he's ready to go he doesn't usually have a flat distribution even distribution of points throughout the game it's usually waves I mean, tonight we saw the third quarter you went absolutely insane from from the field but the the superstars the guys that are your number one option which we're looking for Pascal and maybe Fred Van Vliet but I think Fred's kind of the, the momentum on Fred being a number one option or a number two option in terms of scoring has kind of died off from what we've seen, and we'll get into Fred after. But Pascal Siakam needs to be able to get a shot to quiet a crowd, to get a shot that will stop the Bucks from getting on that momentum and the role players feeling confident enough to shoot contested threes, like the Pat Connaughton's of the world. And, you know, the Bucks' role players are pretty solid. The, almost all of them scored, you know, six, seven, eight, nine points. And that's because their team is rolling in for, for long periods of time in this game. And that's that's where your superstar really has to just cut off that momentum, put their foot down, and get you a bucket. And Siakam didn't have a bad game by any means, but I think he struggled to get you the buckets when the, the team really needed. The team needed an energizer. The team needed a pick-me-up. And that could have happened in the first quarter or it could have happened at the end of this game when the Raptors made their comeback. They made their way back. Siakam got us inserted into the lineup in the fourth quarter and... Couldn't bring it home because, the, you know, on the backs of Kyle Lowry and other players, they uh, they, they brought the t- game back, and that's when your superstar is supposed to, supposed to end it. So that that's a learning experience for Pascal Siakam. I'm certainly not going to overreact because he's been amazing this year, and he's been doing it against some struggling teams. But we, we want to see it against the Bucks. We want to see it against the Celtics. We want to see it against the Nuggets, top, top teams in the league. So we'll see the next top-tier opponent we play and see if he's capable of doing it. I'm sure he will be, but something to look at as we go forward and look at his development as the number one option on this team. But, yeah, now we'll briefly talk about other players. Fred Van Vliet, he also struggled tonight. He had a couple threes. He had 12 points, but... We want to see more from Fred Van Vliet if he's going to be our starting two guard. And we brought up the fact that he's going to be a number number one guy. He had 12 points, 7 assists, 6 rebounds. Not bad box score numbers, but 2 of 10 from the field. Uh, the only shots he hit were threes. And the thing that made me really excited about Fred from the preseason and game one of the season, the way he was finishing around the rim. He was in, in control. He was flipping the ball up. He was using his body because he's got a solid frame to him. And the shots that he put up, they were all protected. And he get clean looks at the rim, even though there's bigs and players around him. But now, when he, he's driving in there, he looks less confident driving in there now, and when he goes in there, he's kind of just hucking up. He has the Norman Powell syndrome of not being getting to the to good spots around the net, but not being able to finish it in there. So, Fred's a guy that I'd really like to see, because his three-point shooting, he's confident, he's confident enough, he's able to facilitate, and Fred isn't playing bad by any means, but to take that next step next evolution to his game I want to see him be able to finish around the rim to a greater extent because I think there's no reason Fred can't be an 18 to 20 point per game score if he can get a couple easy finishes around the rim and maybe just calm himself as he gets gets down there so that's one of my takeaways from this game in particular uh Marcus Hall, he had some shots but we'll get into Marcus Hall after for the segments uh OG Ananobi had a tough turnover at the end of this one, but still played some very solid defense on Giannis. I know Giannis went off and had 36 points on 14 and 20 shooting, but when they were staying in front of him, and the, the Raptors team day defense is not where it's going to be right now. We've seen it kind of collapse at times during games, so that that happened at the beginning of last year. I remember we were on the podcast worried about, you know, how do we have so much defensive talent, and everything just doesn't look in sync just yet. I'm sure the defense is going to certainly drastically improve as the the months months go along but yeah og's individual defense looked great uh kyle lowry's individual defense looked great too he took a couple charges off the bench tonight we saw a glimpse of matt thomas he knocked down a three but the the worries about matt thomas are kind of coming to light his defense is really tough i kind of it's something i've been watching whenever i seen him on the court because his shooting his offense could be fine right if he's he's offensively capable to play in the NBA. The only issue is his defense. And I want to see if his defense is actually as as bad as some people say it is. And tonight, he let a few people break him off the dribble and a few possessions where it didn't end up costing the Raptors, but he's not very great at boxing out. I know a couple of his matchups, I believe one time Bledsoe, just, just kind of waltz in there for the shots uh, for deep offensive rebounds because Matt isn't really getting in the way of them or he's late on that coverage. He needs to have a bit more defensive awareness because we know Matt Thomas isn't going to be a lockdown OG Anobi, Kawhi Leonard-esque ball, ball defender, but he could have a decent IQ because you look at a guy like J.J. Redick, a shooter, Ray Allen, who's not really great 
on ball defender. They they learned how to play defense within a system, and the Raptors have a great defensive system. It's something Nick Nurse has talked about, and the these deeper bench guys really have to play play that on ball defense if they want to get minutes. And the fact that Matt Thomas has so much offensive potential, if he can just be not a negative on defense, he'll be a, he'll be an asset to this team. Terrence Davis also looks solid. Didn't really. Take the take the game by storm by any means, but I don't think he he struggled. He had the best plus minus on the team, so maybe that's something to take away from. But yeah, we're gonna swing it straight to the segments now uh, tonight for the spicy P lay of the day. We're going with uh, Kyle Lowry and his ridiculous heat check jumpers. He he took one where he was dribbling up the court, and it was about four feet beyond the three point line. Just hucked it up in there and splashed it down. That's some classic vintage Kyle Lowry stuff out there, and uh. A mini spicy play of the day. OG Anobi hit a mid-range jumper off the dribble. If he can get that into his game, that's going to be a crazy evolution, crazy development for him. So just something to look out for. Just a little, a little seasoning. Not the, not the spicy play. The little seasoning play from OG Anobi. But not all plays can be the, the spicy play of the day. And some just make you say, "Oh geez." And tonight, the OGs play of the day. One of them is going. I've already brought it up. OGs. Uh, he got the ball stripped from down, down the stretch of this one. Led to uh, actually an Eric Bledsoe missed layup that Giannis ended up putting back for a dunk. That really took us out of the game. But the possession before that really made me say, oh, geez, was Kyle Lowry getting into the lane, made a gorgeous dump off to three time All Star Marcus Sull. And I don't know what he's doing. There's, this has happened a couple times now. I believe it happened against the Celtics as well. He's underneath the rim and he's just real soft at the end of games when he should be just using his size, using his mass, and either doing a hook shot, getting right to the rim. I know he's not going to dunk it, but he's been so capable of getting big buckets in his career. I don't know why at the end of these games he's putting up these really passive layups. And, you know, he missed one at the end of this game that I believe would have brought to him one, and it ended up being a four-point swing. And the Raptors, I think that was the real knockout punch for from the Milwaukee Bucks when Gasol missed that layup. So that's your OGs play of the day. And finally, the infamous, the one and only, Damari Kiro Gold Star Award. It's going to Norman Powell. It hurts me to do this as Norman Powell is one of my favorite players, and I'll forever be on the Norman Powell hive. I think he has the intangibles to be a really solid player in this league, but the inconsistency will drive you crazy. And... You'd hope, because when Norm sees the Bucks, he sees red. He's ready to go. We saw it in the Eastern Conference Finals, and tonight, that certainly wasn't the case. He only had four points. He won quarter three, which was nice, but one of five from the field, one of three from the three-point line, 19 minutes, had a few rebounds, but you want to see Norman Powell be able to get you some buckets, because we don't have Fred Van Vliet now to be the spark plug off the bench. We need a guy that can consistently get you get you some points coming off coming off that bench. And Sergi Baca tonight struggled more than he usually does, but had in terms of scoring, because three of ten from the field, that's how it be. He had, he had some free throws, eleven points, but he got some ridiculous blocks. Shout out to Sergi Baca on the defense he was playing. But we need one of those wing guys that can just come in there and be consistently getting you. 10 12 points on efficient shooting and Norman Powell I think he's fully capable of doing that and with his skill set his shooting ability his ability to get to the rim but for some reason Norman Powell's inconsistency has just really plagued him his whole career and we get nights like this where he's just struggles and we've seen a bunch of these this season and I can think it was against the Bucks we saw him have a bounce back game but this is Norman Powell's opportunity to really take some strides and especially with Fred Van Vliet even though he had a great game one if Norman Powell has a few good games, he could end up in the starting position. I know his contract is coming up not this season, or if he has a few years left on his deal, but he should really look to establish himself as a top-tier guy on this roster. There's an opening for it. That, you know, We lost Danny Green. I- I'm just really surprised at how Norman Powell continues to be this inconsistent, and maybe I shouldn't be. I, people call me crazy for supporting Norman Powell as much as I do, but I, I think he's can be good, and I'm sure he'll bounce back at some point. The question is when. The question is when. So let me know what you guys think. Anyways, that's enough of me rambling about this game. I'm not going to lose sleep over this one. We won the championship. We beat the Bucks in the Eastern Conference Finals when it matters. Probably have a few Bucks fans feeling good. And you know what? They deserve it. They deserve it. They took... They, they got that heartbreaking loss all year. They had to deal with that. You know, we're taking Giannis in 2021. If you haven't seen that video, definitely check it out. Anyways... That, that's 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 enough. You're the best for making this far. Check out the Twitter, the the Instagram, all the cool stuff. We should have the spicy play animation coming soon. Fortunately, I've been dealing with midterms. It seems like forever now, and you know I'm recording this. I watch the game at the library, <laughs> so uh, so if I missed anything, certainly let me know in the comment section below. Anyways, I'm signing out. Cheers.